February 7th, St. Romald, Abbot. In the 10th century, Sergius, a nobleman of Ravenna, quarreled with a relative over an estate, and in a duel to which his son Romald was witness, slew him. The young man of 20 years was horrified at his father's crime and entered a Benedictine monastery to do a 40 days penance for him. This penance led to his entry into religion as a Benedictine monk. After three years at Classe, Romuald went to live as a hermit near Venice, where he was joined by Peter, Duke of Venice, and together they led a most austere life in the midst of assaults from the evil spirits. St. Romuald, whose aim was to restore the primitive rule to the order of St. Benedict, succeeded in founding some hundred monasteries in both Italy and France. The principal monastery that he founded was at Camaldi, a wild, deserted region where he built a church surrounded by a number of cells for the solitaries who lived under his rule. His disciples were called Camaldolese. For five years, the fervent founder was tormented by furious attacks of the demon. He repulsed him, saying, O enemy, driven out of heaven, you come to the desert. Depart, ugly serpent, already you have what is due you. And the shamed adversary would leave. St. Romuald's father, Sergius, was moved by the examples of his son and entered religion near Ravana. There he too was attacked by hell and thought of abandoning his design. Romuald went to visit him. He showed him the air of the devil's ruses, and his father died in the monastery in the odor of sanctity. Among his first disciples were Saints Albert and Boniface, apostles of Russia, and Saints John and Benedict of Poland, martyrs for the faith. He was an intimate friend of Emperor St. Henry, and was referenced and consulted by many great men of his time. He once passed seven years in solitude and total silence. He died, as he had foretold twenty years in advance, alone in his monastery of Valcastro on the 19th of June in the year 1027. By the life of St. Romuald, we can see how God brings good out of evil. In his youth, St. Romuald was much troubled by temptations of the flesh. To escape them, he had recourse to hunting, and it was in the woods that he first conceived his love for solitude. His father's sin prompted him to undertake a forty days penance in the monastery, which he then made his permanent home. Some bad examples of his fellow monks induced him to leave them and adopt the solitary mode of life. The repentance of a Venetian duke brought him his first disciple. The temptations of the devil compelled him to lead his severe life of expiation, and finally the persecutions of others were the occasion of his settlement at Camaldi, mother house of his order. St. Romuald's life teaches us that if we only follow the impulse of the Holy Ghost, we shall easily find good everywhere, and even on the most unlikely occasions. Our own sins, the sins of others, their ill will against us, or our own mistakes and misfortunes are equally capable of leading us, with softened hearts, to the feet of God's mercy and love.